My next guest is April Clark. April is a former accountant and high school marketing teacher, now the executive director and co-founder of Reach and Teach, a nonprofit educational program that provides students with the opportunity to plan, promote, and execute a real concert on their school campus, along with other life-changing programs. Clark is a TEDx speaker, SXSWEDU mentor, and Shoals Women of the Year finalist. Welcome to the podcast, April. Hello, I'm excited to be here. Well, tell me about a time when you were in the trenches and managed to crawl out. Yeah, I, I mean, I think every teacher has one of those moments where they have just been in the trenches and found themselves fighting their way out. Mm -hmm. So my moment is um, my actually very first year of teaching, going mm -hmm. from the corporate world to the education world was quite a jump for me. Um, but it helped me provide real world experience for students in my classroom. And one of the things that I really struggled with that first year is fully giving up control to mm -hmm. students to become leaders and make their own decisions. But once I figured that out, it, it, it made such a huge difference in my classroom, um, you know, allowing students to make those real decisions and to really be confident and find their passion through activities that I provided in the classroom. So um, that was a struggle that I had early on, but I would definitely encourage teachers to, to really give up control to their students and allow them to take the lead on, mm -hmm. on projects. You know, sometimes it's so easy for us to want to micromanage everything that students do, but um, you know, these students are going to be making decisions about their future and, mm -hmm. you know, decisions that impact our future in, in not very many years. So yeah. I'm definitely giving them the power to do that. Yeah. yeah and I think that's, uh, we have that common in common that we've both worked with high schoolers and, um, you know, sometimes we want to guide them and, you know, make sure that they're, um, you know, doing the project right, or that they know, you know, let, let's say in, in the wood shop, for example, right, that they're using everything um, safely and, you know, I think it's, you know, giving that demo, right, what, what, whatever it may be as a project, but then kind of um, just being that guide on the side and, and observing, right, because I think yeah. now with the pandemic and a lot of kids who have been more responsible for their own learning and their own personalized projects, you know, they, they've been very innovative, so mm -hmm. I think that's a, a great thing to start out with and telling, um, you know, how, how that's something you learned and, you know, that, that with your organization, you continue to um, help schools with. So uh, tell me a little bit about your transition from teaching into uh, your work that you're currently doing with Reach and Teach and what Reach and Teach does. Absolutely. So uh, back to that very first year of teaching, I was tasked with the responsibility of raising a lot of money very mm -hmm. quickly for some students to go to a leadership conference. And so my students wanted to have a concert on our school campus. Mm -hmm. And I thought that sounded fun. Let's give it a try. Um, I knew absolutely nothing about mm -hmm. hosting a concert, but we jumped in and I allowed, again, my students to take complete control of this project. So students were responsible for setting ticket prices, um, laying out the event venue, mm -hmm. setting up the stage, promoting the concert, selling tickets, getting sponsorships. They were essentially responsible for everything revolving around this event fundraiser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what, what we discovered is that students working real world experience, being a part of this real project that had a, a real outcome, completely changed the way that they worked in the classroom. They mm -hmm. bought into the project and they discovered skills and talents about themselves that they didn't know existed. Um, and so luckily the lead singer of the band that performed at our school, he is also extremely passionate about helping young people. And so he and I, we developed this partnership complete strangers. He was a okay. rock star. I was a teacher. Like you can imagine it's just this unlikely partnership. Mm -hmm. um, but we saw this tremendous impact on the students. And so we knew that this was a concept that we 
needed to take to other schools all across the country. So we spent all summer developing a curriculum, developing the nonprofit and the educational program that goes along with this project. And we launched it. We had Mm -hmm. no idea um, the amount of interest that we would get. And the program just took off. So we've been able to work with a lot of schools all across the, the country. Mm -hmm. Um, providing the opportunity for students to plan, promote, and execute a real concert on their school campus. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine, we can't really do that during a pandemic. (laughs) So um, when COVID appeared in the U.S. back in 2020, we had to truly pivot and, and start producing virtual content for teachers to use in their classrooms. So Mm -hmm. Over the last year, we've been able to launch several new programs, uh, many of which are 100% free and available for any teacher to use uh, that would like access. But a few of those programs are, one of my favorites is we have a virtual interview series. Okay. And we interview industry professionals and they talk about their career, advice that they have for students um, that might be interested in their career. And we tend to highlight those career paths that are maybe um, not very well known to Mm -hmm. students in high school. So we've talked to everyone from a cruise director to Mm -hmm. a makeup artist, um, you know, everything in between. So we have a library of those interviews that are available for teachers to use in their classroom. It includes a corresponding worksheet for students to use as they listen to the interview. Um, So that's one of my favorites because we've been able to meet a lot of people and bring those career um, paths to students Mm -hmm. that maybe they didn't know existed before. Another thing that we do is we have a monthly newsletter that provides all different types of resources to high school teachers. Um, Everything from links to podcasts and TED Talks to case studies. Um, It even has an option where teachers can request a guest speaker for their Mm -hmm. classroom. And this this newsletter is unique because I know for me as a teacher, I felt like I spent so much time filtering through resources Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. looking for TED Talks I could use or looking for podcasts that I could use in the classroom. And so many times I would be, you know, 20 minutes in to research and discover that, you know, there was an inappropriate word or topic that was Mm -hmm, discussed. mm -hmm. So we couldn't use it in the classroom. So for all of the links and resources that we provide through our newsletter, it's 100% vetted and Mm -hmm. appropriate for students. So that's the one thing that we're really proud of is being able to provide that and hopefully saving teachers some time, um, especially during this crazy world that we're living in right now. Mm -hmm. And would you um, suggest, I mean, there, there, we have CTE teachers for the career technical ed, but also um, what other subject area of teachers would uh, benefit from using um, these, uh, as you say, lesson plans, more, more or less that come with the guest speaker or the videos with the worksheets. So would it be, would it be appropriate for English classes, for social studies classes as well? Yeah, so most of our resources are geared towards business and marketing. Mm -hmm, However, mm -hmm. a lot of the virtual interviews that we have, they cover a wide range of topics. We've had engineers, um, we, like I mentioned, we've had makeup artists. So um, every, every teacher that wants to use some type of career exploration activity class, this would be appropriate for. Um, And, you know, every high school teacher should be having some type of career exploration in their class Mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. prepare students for after high school. So um, although our lesson plans are geared towards business and marketing, we definitely have lots of resources that could go across the board for any subject area. Sounds good. And could you give me some examples of innovative projects that um, students can uh, work on uh, using these resources? Yeah, so two of our biggest projects that we offer through Reach and Teach, one I've already talked about, that's the Concert Promotion Project, Mm -hmm. and it's on hold until hopefully fall 2021. Maybe we can get back to live events Mm -hmm. then, Um, but right now we're offering another project that allows students the opportunity to plan, promote, and produce 
an entertainment broadcast. So okay. essentially a TV show. And through this project, students have to set goals. They analyze target, their target market, their target audience. Um, they have to create product placement deals and get sponsorships. Mm -hmm. They have to script write and storyboard. And they have to um, you know, plan out the operations and the mm -hmm. logistics and then promote the end result, which is a TV show. Um, so everything's real world. It can be done virtually, traditionally, um, in a in-person classroom. It's very flexible, um, but it does teach students about entrepreneurship and business and marketing and finance. Um, so that's that's the project that we are mm -hmm. offering right now until we can hopefully get back to concerts soon. But even going forward, when we do return to concerts, we're still going to offer that TV production project as well. Mm -hmm. And have you gotten a lot of feedback from schools where students have made the TV shows and just been able to see the innovation and uh, just really good ideas of what they've produced? Absolutely. We have received so much positive impact from both teachers and students because it allows students to use their creativity. You mm -hmm. know, so many times you think about in business and marketing classes, there's not a whole lot of creativity with mm -hmm. a lot of projects, but through this, they're able to develop, co develop content and mm -hmm. truly bring their ideas to life. Okay. Um, so that's been really fun for them to see. Of course, you know, every high school student thinks that they want to be a YouTuber when they grow <laughs> up. <laughs> this gives them the opportunity to be a YouTuber mm -hmm. in the classroom. So it's a lot of fun. And teachers have said that they've seen students their confidence build, they've discovered, you know, skills and talents they didn't know that they had. And I think that's one thing that's really important for mm -hmm. students at this age in their life is to really go through this self-discovery of figuring out what they're good at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so many times students might think, well, I'm not athletic or, you know, I'm not great in math or history, but their skills and talents such as communication and listening and building relationships. You know, if you're good at that, you can have an extremely successful career built off of those skills and talents. So um, I, I definitely think that self-discovery for high school students is extremely important um, just to mm -hmm. get them thinking about what they want to do with their future. Yeah, because there's um, a lot of kids that might think they want to do X, Y, and Z, and then they do a project, they become more interested in something, or they find out, okay, well, there's a lot of planning and logistics, so maybe I don't want to be that YouTuber. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, it gives them more of that hand-on real-world experience. So I think that's really, um, you know, something the kids um, need more and more these days, um, whether they're, you know, trying to get some career experience virtually or just the fact that, you know, if they don't have those connections, uh, maybe through their school or through their family, um, using uh, your organization to help, um, you know, find ways where they can connect with industry professionals and do these projects uh, will, will help bring them a long way. Um, I wanted to pivot a little bit to um, kind of your experience um, in high school and just kind of what you think, um, you know, you, what now that as an adult looking back and, and working with uh, students with these projects, what do you wish you uh, had known when you were in high school yourself? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And when I was in high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my future. Mm -hmm. I think so many high school students have that same thought. And I, I went to college because, you know, I thought that's what we were supposed to do. And I ended up majoring in accounting um, mm -hmm. simply because my favorite aunt was an accountant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, once I worked in accounting for quite some time, I realized that that wasn't my passion. That's mm -hmm. not something that I felt like I was put on this earth to do. So yeah. that's when I decided to to go back to high school or not to go back to high school, but to go back to college and teach high school hopefully to help students not have that same experience as I did. And so I guess the biggest thing that I wish I would have known when I was in high school is that there are so many opportunities that you don't currently see. Mm -hmm. You know, we a lot of times as young people, we tend to look at our family or our friends and think, you know, that's all that's out there. Yeah. Um, but even to this day, I'm still discovering career paths that I had no idea existed. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so I wish that I would have had more opportunities to be exposed to different career paths. And that's our biggest min- mission point through yeah. Reach and Teach is just giving the giving students the opportunity to just be exposed to see something that they didn't know existed before. And hopefully that will inspire them to, um, you know, try something new and, and definitely be open to new opportunities and, and not being afraid to take that risk and do something they've never done before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I see a lot of, uh, you know, students that have maybe, you know, followed their family. And like you said, um, it didn't last very long for you to be in accounting and, you know, kids that um, get degrees, uh, bachelor's degrees and just whatever, but don't really use it and then end up going into other fields. So, you know, at a young age, you know, it kind of, um, kids need that life experience. And I think even just doing like some type of an internship, maybe between high school and college, having some type of a gap year or a year in the Peace Corps or, you know, working as a volunteer in any type of organization also helps kids kind of gain that world experience so they can um, maybe explore other paths, right? And there's nothing wrong with career changes as well along the way. It helps you um, become a more resilient person and you can use experience. Um, I'm sure some of the experience you have from being an accountant, you use with Reach and Teach um, just kind of in, 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 you know, getting the organizational numbers together, correct? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Every single day. Um, I used to think that I, you know, I spent all this time in accounting and I'm mm-hmm. not ever going to use it, but I use it every single day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely glad that I have that experience. And I think that's something that's really important for us as teachers mm-hmm. to impress upon students is that every experience that you have molds you into the person that you're going to be. And so, you know, instead of looking at that part-time job at the fast food restaurant Mm -hmm. as just a paycheck, looking at it as a way to build your professional network, meet Mm -hmm. new people, um, you know, gain new skills, whether it be communication or teamwork or problem solving or whatever those skills might be, um, every single experience can give you something. And so mm-hmm. I think that's important for, for students to really have that perspective and know that, you know, even those part-time jobs, you're building your reputation and that's going to follow you for a long time. So mm-hmm. using every opportunity that you have, really taking advantage of, of what's been offered to you and, and taking that step outside of your comfort zone to create opportunities that don't currently exist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I liked uh, how you mentioned um, a little bit ago about um, you're exploring even yourself, some of these uh, careers that you didn't know existed. And that's something we see like there are careers that will be available in five years that don't exist now, right? And and as these kids go through high school and, and graduate and, and go into college, I mean, that's where we're preparing our youth of the future for these careers that don't exist. So um, that, you know, learning more communication skills by working in these uh, part-time jobs or, um, you know, working with families, volunteering, et cetera, all that will help them into what they end up exploring um, as what their passion is to be later on. So yeah, I, and I, I really think so many times um, as teachers, we get caught up in thinking that, you know, our, mm-hmm. our only job is to teach the content yeah. and, to, you know, make sure that they do well on tests and things like that. But but really, ultimately, as teachers, we're we're there to prepare them for life after high school, whatever mm-hmm. that might look like for them. And so for every single student, that's going to look different. Mm-hmm. Um, and so truly bringing in opportunities to your classroom for students to explore new career paths or to get their feet wet and try something new. Um, one of my favorite things to do in my class was to you know, have different types of equipment that students didn't have access to at home. Mm -hmm. And so where I taught was a very rural community. And, you know, a lot of our students didn't have internet at home. Um, They definitely didn't have access to fancy cameras or video equipment. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would purchase things like a drone or a GoPro or Mm -hmm. a camera for my classroom. And, you know, you might be thinking, well, how in the world can you use that for education? Yeah. <laughs> but, but we did all types of things. We had students that 
um, would do a weekly interview and they would produce this interview show and talk about all the things that they learned that week during the class. So mm -hmm. there's ways to tie it into your class. And if you can be innovative in bringing those ideas into your classrooms, mm -hmm. you're going to see students get excited to come to your class and get excited to learn. And when you can make learning fun, to where students don't even realize that they're learning that's yeah. the sweet spot <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's true right that they're just kind of really excited to go to your class and and you know it's not like a thing they have to do it's a thing they want to do when they're working on the project and they're excited to come back after the weekend so <laughs> yeah no it sounds it sounds really exciting when when teachers are able to get the um, materials that you know kids can explore and, and use hands-on and you know things that they wouldn't see otherwise that's always great to you know have them use uh tech um tools like that um yeah. I, I wanted to ask a little bit about um advice that you have for teachers um who are currently struggling to connect with students um if they're still teaching remotely uh, especially uh, at the high school level where there are a lot of kids who don't turn their cameras on <laughs> yes that's such a challenge um during this virtual world mm -hmm. that everyone's having to teach and learn in it's definitely a challenge and you know i would just say that whatever activities whatever projects that you're implementing into your classroom mm -hmm. make sure that it connects with your students mm -hmm. so one thing that i always did when i was teaching is before we started any new project i would always talk to my students and get their feedback yeah. get their input and allow them to help build the project. What do they want to get out of it? What do they mm -hmm. want to learn? Um, how do they want to execute the project? And so by allowing them to make those decisions and be a part of the project planning process, that's going to create buy-in for your mm -hmm. students. And, and they're going to be invested in, you know, wanting to make that project succeed because it was their idea. Mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely say, talk with your students, you know, mm -hmm. have that conversation up front about what they want to learn and how they want to learn it. Um, and of course, you know, you can't always implement every idea that they have, but, um, you know, making them a part of the process mm -hmm. uh, will definitely help with, with creating engagement and connecting with your students. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, you talked to me a little bit in the pre-chat about um, sometimes uh, you're working with a school and there's guest speakers and and there's still kids that don't have their cameras on when there's a guest speaker. Um, but maybe the more something's relatable to the um, student, right, the more they're and, you know, students can still be engaged um, without turning their camera on if they're asking questions and, you know, responding to questions. But like you said, it's it's having that. Um, something that connects them to real life, right? If they're interested in video games, right? They can go on and on about the video game that they play or the YouTube channel that they follow, right? So. Absolutely. And I think that's important. Um, you know, when you bring in guest speakers or when mm -hmm. you bring in projects is like you mentioned, having it relate to the interests of the students. Um, one of the reasons our program was so popular from the very beginning is because it revolved around a concert mm -hmm. and students love music. And so that was the way that we were able to connect with students is because it was something they were interested in. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, whether it be video games or movies or, you know, whatever it is students are interested in having your projects and activities connect with them will definitely help them to engage. And and definitely from from experience, I've talked to a lot of classrooms. I've worked with a lot of teachers over this last year virtually. And coming from someone on the outside, I definitely love it when students have their cameras on so that you mm -hmm. can see their faces. Um, you know, it's and teachers, I know you're dealing with this all the time of talking to a blank screen. Mm -hmm. um, I would just say, hang in there. This too shall pass. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and hopefully um, when we start the fall semester, everybody will be back in person in some form or fashion. And, um, you know, and I think something to remember with those kids, um, when they're using um, these projects, when they're gaining tools and learning about the careers, uh, they're also acquiring skills that they can use um, for future jobs. They are able to add this to their resume um, as high schoolers. Um, it's not only that, um, 
you know, the, the part-time job that they're working with, but they can also say, Hey, I helped create this TV show, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or I helped develop this website. I helped plan this concert um, or, you know, set up ticket sales, set up the finance of, um, you know, bringing in this, this guest to um, have a concert. So that's, that's definitely something worth pointing out as students um, often think when they go into college, they don't have much to put on the resume. Absolutely. And, and, you know, hypothetical projects are very popular in the classroom. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of teachers use hypothetical projects, but anytime that you can use real world projects, whether it be you're connecting with industry Mm -hmm. partners, or, you know, you're working through an organization on a project like this, um, I would highly recommend that over hypothetical projects because yeah. students want to have that real tangible result that they can touch and feel and be a part of. Um, mm-hmm. It just makes such a difference. And, and like you said, it's something that they can put on their resume. Mm-hmm. Um, so as uh, students um, go on summer break uh, around the time this is going to be released, uh, what are some Uh, resources that teachers can uh, peruse, let's say over break or as they're kind of planning for next school year, uh, that are available and um, what is Reach and Teach maybe planning for the 21-22 school year um, that may look different from what um, you guys had available for this past school year. Absolutely. So you can find all of our resources on our website. It's www.reachandteach.rocks, R-O-C-K-S. Um, so you can find it there on our website. We have links to all of the interview series. Um, all of our lesson plans are there. You can, you can preview those. If you're interested in participating in our projects, you can enroll 100% for free um, mm-hmm. and get access to all of those lesson plans. Also, I would say follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, find us on LinkedIn. Um, We're always putting out new content and we're really excited in the next couple of months to be launching a podcast um, that's gonna be short, 10 to Mm -hmm. 15 minute podcast that you can use that is actionable advice for students that they can do right now while they're still in high school to prepare them for their future. Um, So we're excited about that. That'll be new for the 2021 fall semester. And then, like I mentioned, we hope to get back to concerts. And um, we've also launched a new program called the Virtual Lunch and Learn. And it's in its pilot semester right now. So we're gathering feedback. We're making sure that what we're doing is effective. And our goal is to launch that nationally in the fall. So definitely follow us on social media. You can check back for all of our updates and all of our resources that we put out there. And one thing that we're really proud of is that everything that we provide for teachers is 100% free. And we knew when we founded this organization that It needed to be free because schools that needed this the most Mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to afford it. And Mm -hmm. so um, we said from day one, everything we put out will be 100% free and available to teachers. And we stuck by that. So we're excited to support teachers, especially during this crazy year that we've had. Mm -hmm. And that's so great to hear that, um, you know, teachers can discover the reach and teach material and and peruse the website and, you know, find things that they might not have known about um, during this past school year as they go into uh, planning for 21-22 and making it an even uh, better year for students um, in terms of discovering career passions, discovering, um, you know, uh, how to do TV shows, how to, you know, bring in uh, people to sing for a concert, et cetera. So uh, out of everything we talked about today on the podcast, what's one thing you'd like listeners to remember? I think the most important thing um, that I learned throughout my teaching career is is truly allowing your students to be part, not part, to take leadership of Mm -hmm. their education. Um, That has made all the difference in every single project, classroom, students, teachers, everyone that I have worked with is when you can truly give up control and let students take lead of their own education where teachers simply become facilitators, um, that will make such a huge impact in your classroom. And 
And, you know, it was always interesting to me, ideas that students had that I thought were going to be an epic failure, Mm -hmm. many times ended up being a huge success. And that taught me so much is that these students are creative. These students are innovative. They have better ideas than we do. Mm -hmm. And if we can allow them to try their ideas, even if we know or think that they're going to fail, we have to allow them to try Mm-hmm. even if we think it's going to be a failure. So um, that was the biggest lesson I learned. And it's something that I love to pass on to teachers is that these students, they'll impress you. They'll surprise you. So allow them to take control. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really um, great advice as, you know, we, we want to empower our students. We want to recognize their interests, their talents, um, and let them roll with it, right? So I think that's um, a great word to end on. Uh, So you gave me some of the links to uh, resources, but where can people follow you online? And also um, is Reach and Teach on Facebook and YouTube and um, maybe some, um, you know, what social channels you all or yourself are on? Yeah. So Reach and Teach is on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We're on Instagram. We also have a YouTube channel that has all of our interviews on there. In fact, there's actually a lot of professional development for teachers on our YouTube channel mm-hmm. as well, too. So um, you, I'll, I'll be sure and send you the links and you can drop that into the show notes. And then also, you, if you want to connect with me, the best place to connect with me is on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find me there. So I'll be sure and send you the link to my LinkedIn profile as well, too. Okay, I'll make sure to put that in the show notes. Well, thanks so much for being on the Out of the Trenches podcast today. It was a pleasure. Yes, I enjoyed it so much.